Okay, so now we have Mozart's 40th symphony and we're in the first movement, the really famous bit. <laughs> that bit. It's on, it'll probably be almost the first excerpt that any bass player in the world will have to play when they go and do an audition. Why is that? Well, it's a wonderful moment. It's a melodic, significant moment for the basses. And it's also quite tricky. So it's an interesting challenge. Now, I play the opening and then it goes to this quaver passage. <laughs> which is quite different, obviously. Then you have a similar pattern to the opening. And more semi -quaver, more quavers. So I'll talk about these separately. First of all, in many auditions I've heard players come along and play this, they have adopted one or other scenario, neither of which I think is entirely appropriate. If you think of the opening of this symphony, the very opening, it's in G minor and the violins start very quiet. That sort of thing, really quiet. So I've heard players come to this and think, okay, well this is the basses, it's 40, but we better put it sort of gentle like the violins were. That's not right. It's forte and it's a really dramatic moment. Most of that put this here to, um, it really creates a, a major turning point in this movement. And so it's 40. However, that does not mean that we went, then want to go and crash about like that. It's not an out of control 40, it's a Mozart 40. So it still has to have this shape, quality of sound and phrasing. Now let's think about this melody, both in the opening and here. The melody sort of is the B, isn't it? And the dissonant note, if you like, is the C. Because we're in the sort of E minor harmony here. And as is normal in sort of dissonant notes, the reason you have a dissonant note there, you sort of want to bring that out slightly. So then you might think, well, okay, I'll do that. But then of course we have this other thing in that really we want to bring out the first beat. The first beat should be the strongest note in this phrase. The third should be the second strongest, really, if we're going to get really academic about it. Um, so we have a lean, but we want this note to be strong as well. How are we going to do that? We don't just do your lean on everything. That's not going to work. What I would suggest here, you do this with the bow. You do the lean with the bow, but the first note, you put a nice vibrato on it. And that phrase has real life, it has direction, you get that sort of sense of uh, dissonant, dissonancy, and, uh, but you still have that strong first beat. You'll notice the bowing I'm doing is a bow that was done using the Berlin film many years ago. It's quite an interesting bowing just because it um, lends itself well to the phrase. Okay, and the same, all those principles would apply exactly the same in the second uh, little section here. Okay, the quavers, you just need to play the right notes in the right time at the right place. It's just... I would say they have staccatos, so whereas in uh, other movements, like in, in at letter C, for instance, where we have a long row, and we're going to use a really uh, a, a wide brush stroke, here with the staccatos and uh, and the movement in this passage, we don't want we don't want that. You 
you're going to lose that sort of definition and excitement and movement and rhythm. So this needs to be that sort of stroke. Okay, so that's that.